Bees are fascinating little creatures. They live in massive social colonies, and they have recently been named the most important living creature on the planet. You might not think it, but bees and serial killers have something in common. Serial killers commit their crimes close to home, but far enough away that the neighbors don't get suspicious. Similarly, bees collect pollen near their hive, but far enough away that predators can't find the hive. To understand how this buffer zone works, scientists studied bee behavior and compared it to geographic profiling data from police. Geographic profiling is a technique used by police forces around the world to come up with lists of leading suspects in investigations of serial crimes. Using the sites of a serial killer's crimes to predict where the killer is most likely to live. Geographic profiling was used to analyze patterns made by foraging bees visiting flowers. The results of the bee experiments have allowed criminologists to perfect their technique for police forces and predict the serial killer's locations with more accuracy. The same data can be used to help locate beehives, information which could then be used to aid the conservation of the species, which due to the colony collapse phenomenon are in rapid decline. You may have heard at some point in your life that by the laws of physics, Bees shouldn't be able to fly because their wings are too small to lift their comparatively big bodies. And if bees flew like aeroplanes, this would be correct. An aeroplane's wing forces air down, which pushes the plane upwards. Bees sweep their wings back and forth in a partial spin. Rather than being like a propeller, the angle to the wing creates vortices in the air like small hurricanes. The eyes of these mini hurricanes have a lower pressure than the air outside, which lifts the bees upwards. The stinger on the bee is actually a modified ovipositor, or the appendage insects use to deposit and position their eggs, meaning that only the female members of the hive are able to sting. Modern bees evolved from a parasitic wasp that would use a sharp ovipositor to deposit its eggs in the body of prey. Today it is connected to a venom sac and is used for defense. But there is more to bee venom than evolutionary defense. Scientists have found that a toxin in bee venom called melitin may prevent HIV. Melitin can kill HIV by poking holes into the virus's protective envelope while leaving all healthy cells unaffected. Scientists aim to use this knowledge to develop preventative gels. Also, bee venom acupuncture has showed promising results as therapies for Parkinson's disease. And it has therapeutic uses for rheumatoid arthritis, nerve pain, multiple sclerosis, and muscle conditions such as fibromyosis and enthesitis. A worker bee stinger has evolved to be barbed, so it breaks off when it's lodged into the thick skin of a mammal. Animals like bears, badgers, and rodents want to steal their honey and eat the protein-rich larvae within the hive. So the honeybee evolved specific anti-mammal defenses. When the worker stings and flies away, the stinger stays put and a pumping venom sac stays with it. The worker bee will die after several minutes from her injuries, but she will have inflicted maximum damage to her target as her stinger keeps on injecting poison even after she has died. In contrast to the worker bee stinger, a queen stinger is smooth and can be used multiple times. She will rarely ever sting a human, as she never leaves the nest. A queen uses her stinger exclusively to battle other queens. Worker bees replace old or dysfunctional queens by making a new queen from their old queen's eggs. When a queen lays an egg, she can either lay an unfertilized or a fertilized egg. A fertilized egg has the potential to become either a worker bee or a queen bee. The egg's fate is decided by its diet. Both worker bee larvae and queen bee larvae are fed royal jelly for the first few days. On day four, worker larvae is switched to a diet of honey and pollen, while the queen bee larvae continues to be fed royal jelly throughout her development. 
When workers make a new queen, they often make more than one. This gives them the best chance at raising a strong, viable queen. However, there can only be one queen bee in a hive. So when a new queen hatches, she must kill her competitors. A newly hatched queen will sting her unhatched rivals, killing them while they are still in their cells. If you like this video, make sure to follow us on Facebook, like us on YouTube, and come back soon for more Factables.